hello again, Grace Bible Church. It's good to see you, family. Hope you're doing well. I uh, hope that you are being blessed by the Lord as you continue to walk through these rivers with us together through this whole mess of what's going on uh, in our society right now. We're praying for you. We love you. We want to keep you informed in terms of what's going on. And so a couple of things to let you know about that are important for us to know in regards to church and what's happening there. Uh, first thing we want to let you know about is that uh, there won't be a uh, an afternoon service at Fair Oaks this Sunday, and there may not be any more uh, on into the future. Um, we'll still be having the uh, 100 in the courtyard uh, during the 9 a.m. streaming service. I would encourage you and welcome you to register for that. Uh, we had about 55, 60 people there last week, and it was really just nice to have a bunch of people there singing together and being together, fellowshipping afterwards. So we'd welcome you to do that. Part of the reason, though, why we are going to be, in all likelihood, stopping the afternoon services at Fair Oaks is that things are going to be changing uh, in our county. Uh, looks like pretty quickly, could be as early as next Tuesday. But what we're going to be starting as of October 4th, Sunday, October 4th, is we will be moving back to two services. And initially, our plan is this. We will have uh, our 9 o'clock service, which will be streamed as normal. And there will be 100 people in the courtyard that will be uh, watching on the, the big screens that we have that are out there. If you were there last week, you know we've got three big TV screens, uh, real nice uh, QLEDs with good color on them and whatnot, and a sound system out there with four speakers so everybody can hear and uh, be comfortable as we, as we worship together. Um, that service will continue. We'll also be doing an 1115 service that will not be streamed but with a little bit of a twist. And what's going to happen during that second hour is that Tony will actually move out to the courtyard, be preaching in the courtyard. Uh, Michael and his guitar will come out and lead worship uh, in the courtyard. Um, so that'll be a difference for the second hour service that will be in the courtyard. Also a change for the, well, really an addition for the first hour service is starting on October 4th, during the nine o'clock service, we will also be beginning to have our uh, CE ministry opened back up. The state has authorized us to have uh, cohorts that our CE fits into. And so we are going to start having a uh, preschool class, a kindergarten first grade class, a second and third grade class, and then a fourth and fifth grade class. Sixth grade is now part of middle school, part of junior high, so they won't have a Sunday school class um, in CE in that regard any longer. So those four classes for our children will be starting up also on October 4th. And parents, we will be sending you some information next week in an email that will be very important for you to read and go over so that you know our uh, check-in procedures and where kids will be and whatnot. Um, so that's, that's really good news. We're excited about that, to be able to have two services, uh, one kind of live um, in the courtyard, um, so be watching for your email October 4th. Be signing up for those. Again, we'd love to see a full courtyard this Sunday with 100 people, so don't hesitate to sign up. If you've been one of those people that's been holding off, letting other people go, uh, it seems like a lot of people have been doing that, so don't do that. Just sign up, and, and we'll see you there uh, Sunday morning. Um, second thing to let you know about that also could affect uh, us as early as October 4th, if things go really well, is that our county is headed closer towards the next tier down, towards the red tier, which what that does for us as a church, uh, as long as things stay as we hope and expect that they will, what that will mean for us as a church is that we will get back to being able to have up to 100 people in the sanctuary. So when that happens, what we will potentially do is have 100 people in the sanctuary and 100 people in the courtyard uh, for each service, the first hour and second hour. And then what we would do is is uh, work it out so that you're in the sanctuary one week and then courtyard next and try to flip it that way. But if we do something like that, that would accommodate you know up to 400 people for us and essentially get us back to people coming to church. Uh, on a weekly basis for all those who are comfortable. Uh, we still do have the mask mandate in place from the state. We do, uh, we're still asked to do some social distancing. So that may come into effect. Another thing that may be a little twist on that 
is that uh, we're talking about right now and, and looking into the possibility of having uh, 100 in the sanctuary in that building and then up to 45 in the fellowship hall in that building. So we're looking into that too, and that could be a possibility for us. So we could have up to almost 300 indoors. And at that point, we would make a determination whether or not we would keep the outdoor service going or not, or just have those two, uh, two buildings open for uh, in-person services indoors. So we don't have to worry about cold or wind or heat or traffic noise or anything like that. So what we'd ask you to do is this, pray for the numbers to stay low. We've had numbers in the red tier range for one week and uh, as of last Tuesday. Um, they've been there the, the last two days. And as long as they stay there through next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, we will be able to go down into the red tier. That decision will be um, at the, uh, the decision will be made by the, our county's health director. Um, but what he indicated to the Board of Supervisors on Tuesday is that his desire would be to open things up quickly and as much as is possible. That's what he stated to them. Whether that's what happens will remain to be seen, but we're going to hope and pray for that so that potentially by October 4th, we might not have just two courtyard services. We might start meeting inside too. We have to let you know as soon as we know, but for now, what we're going to plan for on October 4th are those two uh, services in the courtyard First hour, nine o'clock with CE provided. Second hour in the courtyard with uh, Tony and Michael provided out in the courtyard. So we're excited about that. We hope that you are too. And we'd love to see a couple hundred people there that day. Unless things change and we're able to do inside, then our numbers will increase. Uh, that would be great. So just pray for those things. Um, there's a lot of uh, work that goes into this. There's a lot of logistics that, that have to happen. So be praying for that as well, that we just would have smooth sailing as we prepare for those things. Two things just to make you aware of keep, or keep you reminded of. One is remember that the way that we are doing um, the, the assignments, if you will, for Sunday mornings is by registration. Um, it's, we're, we're no longer going to be asking you which services you can go to and try and balance that out. That was nice. Uh, it was smooth in terms of dividing services between people, but it was lots of work and a lot of changes happening every day. So registration is going to be the way that we're going to go. So we just want you to keep reminded of that uh, so that you know that if you'd like to come here, you know, when we're up to 200, 300 or 400, if you want to come to church, just be sure and register so that you will be sure that you have a spot and, um, that will be helpful to us as well as uh, to you so that you know when you can when you can come here. Um, the second thing, and this is a prayer request and also an encouragement for you to think about, is currently, while we are preparing for uh, children's education classes to start on October 4th, as of right now, we only have teachers for two of those classes. We have teachers ready for our preschool class, and we have teachers ready for our fourth and fifth grade class. We have no teachers for our kindergarten first grade class. We have no teachers for our second and third grade class. So if you are a member of Grace Bible Church and uh, you would be interested in teaching or helping in one of those classes, um, please let me or Miriam Denny know, either one of us, and we will get you connected. If you've never taught before, um, we have curriculum that's easy to use and we've got experienced teachers that are, will be helpful to walking you through even how to prepare a class. We have classes set up very simply and uh, we would just encourage you, especially if you've been a teacher before or if you've been kind of waiting to see how things go. Uh, right now, we need some teachers. Uh, we need at least four more. And if we end up doing uh, CE both services, which eventually we will as as we get back more to normal, um, we will need, in addition to the four that we need just to get started on the fourth, we'll need another six beyond that. Um, so if you're inclined to teach, please let us know. Um, even if you would only be able to sign up to be a teacher for just a, a few months or a month at a time, that would be helpful to us so that we can be preaching the gospel to our young kids and having them uh, kind of get back to their classes and get back to a Sunday school routine, that would be a little more normal for them. So please be thinking about that if that's a potential uh, ministry area that you could serve in. Um, if that's not, please be praying that the Lord would provide people and uh, make them feel a little bit like, oh, hey, maybe I should do that. So pray for that along with us as well.
Um, that's really what we have for you guys in terms of announcements, in terms of what's going on for church. Be sure and read your weekly bulletins, the emails that get sent out on Fridays. Those have announcements in them as well. Uh, sometimes people will call the office and say, hey, are we going to be doing this or that this year? And um, It's in the announcements. It's in there. So um, be sure and read them before you make a phone call or send an email to the office asking if we're doing something or what's happening because we might have already told you. You just may not have have seen that or, or paid attention to it or maybe it's a too long, didn't read situation for you. Take some time. Just go through those. Announcements are in there. Uh, we're trying to keep you as informed as we can of those things that are going on. Okay, as I close today, what I'd like to do is just share with you a little bit from uh, Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. As, as we keep walking through this time in our country's history, um, not only are we dealing with uh, the pandemic, you know, for six months now, and it's probably going to be dealt with for months longer still in some capacity, um, we're also dealing with a lot of the social unrest uh, that is happening because of various, various things that are going on in our country. Um, there's a, a lot of just cultural shifting taking place that is sometimes very difficult um, to to watch or to to deal with, and a lot of times it can be frustrating. It can be inf- confusing. Can cause us to be angry. Cause us to be hopeless. All different types of emotions that we may feel. Um, but I always want to encourage you: be drawn back to the Word. Be drawn back to truth always. And what I'd like to share with you is from Second Thessalonians today, starting in verse three, chapter one. Paul writes these words. He says, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Let me just stop there and just ask you if if that is something that you can say is true for you. Is your faith growing and is your love for one another, other family members in this church, our body of Christ here, is your love for people here, is that growing? I just encourage you just to think about that just for yourself. Are those two things growing in your life? Because they are things that are pleasing to the Lord. They are things that are good for us to be pursuing is growth of our faith and love for one another. Paul's praising these people for what he sees in them because he knows that it's honoring to the Lord. Verse four, he continues, therefore we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions, in all the afflictions that you are enduring. Now, we're not facing so much persecutions right now. There's little bits here and there and probably will increase over time. But we certainly are enduring afflictions. And Paul here is is praising these these members of the church in, in Thessalonia because they're an example to other churches. He says, I'm telling other churches about your faithfulness because of how you are enduring these persecutions, because of how you are handling these afflictions. So I want to encourage you and challenge you to kind of take that on as well, that our response in affliction would be one that is glorifying to the Lord. It would be one that shows trust in him, that shows our hope is in him and not in this world, not in, not in what's going on culturally, not in society, not in politics, not in anything else, but our hope is in Christ. Our faith is in Christ. Our trust is in Christ. That we would strive to be a model to others around us. That we're not hoping in this world. This world, as, as scripture tells us, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. It's a short time that we're here our, our, the Bible describes our life as a, a vapor, a wisp of smoke. It's just a short time. And then eternal life is what we ought to be living for and focusing on. Colossians 3, right? Set your mind on things that are above. If you're in Christ, set your mind there where Christ is seated in the heavenly places. I encourage you to do that. But he continues on too. And I think this is important uh, for us to do also to keep in mind some of the things that he writes in the next section. He says this, what he's just talked about, this is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. 
Here Paul says, look, relief is coming and judgment is coming to those who have afflicted you. But here he says, it may not come until Jesus comes back. But you and I have to be committed to the understanding, the biblical understanding that God will bring justice. God will judge fairly and rightly everyone and everything. And relief will come to those who are God's people. And judgment will come to those who are not. We need to remember that because it's easy to lose sight of that and to get caught up in the things that we're dealing with right now. And we may want something right now to happen. We may, may want vengeance right now. We may want justice right now. And the Bible tells us that's not what we should expect. The Bible doesn't call you and I to fix society. Jesus will do that when he comes. But what we will see until that point is man's failures to try to do that. And men will continually fail to do that. Man is not capable of bringing about the things that man says he wants because we don't have the power. We don't have the authority. Only Jesus has that. That's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, that we need to keep pointing people to Christ, to Jesus as the answer. Not anything else, not any program, not any political party, nothing else other than Christ is the ultimate answer. We need to remember that. Vengeance is not ours to seek. There's a saying I'll sometimes share with the kids. That we take a couple little things, you know, maybe twist them out of context a little. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Eh, I just want to be about my father's business. I just want to do what God wants. And so we, we may use something like that to kind of take a little vengeance out on people ourselves and say, I'm just, just doing God's work. That's not what God calls us to do. That's not how it works. Here, Paul is reminding them, Justice is coming. Judgment is coming to those who have afflicted you. Jesus will bring it. Jesus will bring it. Let me continue on. He says, They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good work and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us, those who have afflicted God's people will suffer and they will suffer greatly under eternal punishment. Now, I want you to just consider that for a moment. Sometimes that make, may make us say, yes, about time. What that should make us say and make us feel is mercy and pity towards those people who will be under this judgment. Remembering that you and I deserve to be under that judgment as well. The only reason we're not is because of God, because of his kindness, because of his mercy towards us because he opened our eyes to, to see the gospel, to understand the gospel, to know Christ, to be known by Christ, as Paul put it in Galatians. There's nothing greater than that. There's nothing more needed than that. And people who are currently rest underneath the wrath of God should receive our mercy and our pity for what they have coming. And that should cause us to want more than anything else, more than winning an argument, winning a debate, it should want us to win them over to Christ. That's what we should want, is for them to come to know Jesus, not to come over to my way of thinking, but to come to know Jesus. Because this is what they're headed for, eternal punishment, complete removal from, from God and all his grace and all his goodness. That's what they have coming. We need to take comfort in that, knowing that God will keep his promises and he will judge those who are in need of judgment. But it also should, also should motivate us to want to spread the gospel to more people and to share that with them because that's what they need. They don't need anything else other than that. And that's what we need to remember that we need too. 
Paul says here that he, he wants our good works, our faith by the power of Christ to do something. Verse 12, he says, so that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him. That's the purpose that Paul points out here. It's the reason for us to, to do good work, a reason for us to have po power in our faith, to have a strong faith, is so that Jesus is glorified in us. And when he's glorified in us, we are glorified in him. So let, let Jesus be the motivation for you as you endure through these times. Let him be the one who pulls you through this time of affliction. If you're suffering now, suffer for him, for his glory. If you are rejoicing now, things are going well in your life, praise God for that and give the glory to Christ. And remember these things that Paul has written to this church. Remember it for us, for our situation. God will bring perfect justice. There will be nothing skipped over, nothing left out. Nothing that is sinful will go unpunished. Everything either has been punished in Christ or it will be punished by God ultimately as he judges people. We need to take comfort in that. But as we take comfort in that, let it also motivate us, one, to live for Christ more and more, and two, to share Christ all the more with people as well. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Encourage you to think about that today. Be blessed. Hopefully, we'll see many of you Sunday and hopefully a lot more the Sunday after. Take care. Good night.